Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the July 2021 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's start by taking a read of the information. So it says, the following information relates to Bevan, a production line worker, for the month of May 2021. So they tell us here in the table, payroll information for Bevan. The first thing that they give us is the total number of hours worked for the month, which is 185 hours. The next three items are deductions, statutory deduction, voluntary deductions, and national insurance deduction per month. Following that, they give us the pay rates, the regular pay rate per hour, which is $20, and the overtime pay rate per hour, which is time and a half. So the overtime period is the period he earns if he works overtime, which is any hours past the regular hours. Time and a half means you're going to find half of the regular rate and add it onto the regular rate. Half of 20 is 10, 20 plus 10 is 30. Now, they tell us some important information. I mean, all the information is important, but this here is especially important. The total number of hours in a regular work week is 40 hours. Assume that four weeks make up one month. All right. Now, what do they want us to do? So the first thing they want us to do is to calculate the total number of regular hours worked. So it says that the total number of hours in a regular work week is 40 and that four weeks make up one month. So they want the total number of regular hours Bevan worked for the month of May 2021. So all we have to do is a little bit of math. We take the total number of hours in the regular work week, which is 40, and we multiply by the number of weeks in the month, which is 4, and we get 160 hours for the month of May. That's the regular work week. Sorry, the total number of regular hours for the month of May. The next thing they want us to calculate is the total number of overtime hours which Bevan worked for the month of May. Okay, so to do that, again, a little more arithmetic. We're going to take the total number of hours worked for the month, which is 185. And all we have to do is subtract the total number of regular hours. Because remember, over time is the number of hours worked in excess of or more than the regular hours. So if the total number of hours worked is 185, and out of that 185, 160 was regular, it means the number of overtime hours was 25 hours for the month. Okay, so for part three in the question, it says using the information provided in the table on page 16 and your answers from parts A, 1 and 2, calculate Bevan's net pay for the month of 2021. So let's scroll back up to take a look at that information. Okay, so the calculation of net pay for the month of May. So net pay is the pay after all deductions have been made. So the first thing we need is actually gross pay. And Bevan earns two sets of pay, one for regular and one for overtime. Let's check out the regular pay first. So we know that the regular pay rate is $20 per hour. And we know from our previous working that Bevan worked a total of 160 regular hours for the month of May. So all we have to do is multiply those two things together. The total number of regular hours is 160. The regular period is $20 per hour. And when you multiply those two, you get $3,200. Now let's work out the overtime pay. So we need the number of overtime hours, which we previously worked as 25. So we're going to take that and multiply by the overtime rate, which we said is $30. Time and a half. Remember what that means, time and a half. What it means is you take half of the regular rate, half of 20 is 10, and add it back onto the regular rate. 20 plus 10 is 30. So 25 by 30 is 750. And when you add those two things together, we get 3,950. Well, that's gross pay. We want net pay. How do we find net pay? It's gross pay minus all deductions. Where are we going to find these deductions? Well, they give those to us right here in this table. You have statutory 190, voluntary 200, and national insurance 120. So we're going to put in those things one at a time. 190, 200, 120. We're going to total them up to get 510. And we're going to take that away from the 3950 to get 3440. So that's Bevan's net pay. Now there's one small part of this question. So in this last part, which is part B apparently, 
state one example of a statutory deduction and one example of a voluntary deduction, one mark each. So no long explanation. And again, you can put anything that you know is a statutory and anything that you know is voluntary. I simply put income tax or PAYE and for voluntary, I put health plan or insurance, right? So statutory means that it is by law. The government has mandated that those deductions be made. In Trinidad, you also have to pay something called health surcharge, which supports the, the public health care system, which I think is $8.25 per week. And um, voluntary deductions, yeah, health plans, insurance, personal pension plans, that sort of stuff. Okay, let's check out part C. Okay, so let's take a look at part C to this question. It says that John, the proprietor of Foot Souls, a business which trades in shoes, has supplied the cash projections data shown in the form on page 18. Additional information. Foot Souls forecasts that the bank balance will be 5000 on 1st of May 2020. Okay. Prepare the cash flow projections for foot soles for the six months ending October 2021 by calculating and completing the appropriate spaces in the form provided on page 18. Include all appropriate headings and labels. Fill in necessary totals. Include any missing sections for the completion of a cash flow statement. Again, I don't believe that the, this word here is in the right place. It is not a cash flow statement. It is a cash flow projection. A cash flow statement is an actual financial statement governed by accounting standards. Again, maybe I'm just being very nitpicky, um, but yeah, they shouldn't call it a cash flow statement. Anyhow, so what I did was I recreated the format. So let me pull that up and we'll go through the question piece by piece. Okay, so we have here foot soles cash, cash flow projections for the six months to 31st October 2021. So what you are seeing here is what they've given us. So they have, well, they have the months on top here. They have cash sales, receipts from credit customers. Now that section, that's the inflow section. So they didn't have that heading. And as they said in the instructions from just now, put in all headings as necessary. And this section down here, you have payments to suppliers, salary expense, purchase of non-current assets, rent expense, income tax payable. Well, if the above section was inflows, this is definitely going to be outflows. All right, so what is missing? Well, the first thing we are missing is the totals for each of the sections. So we're gonna put those in. So all that, that's required is that you're gonna add up, right, going down, 30 and 15 is 45, 21 and 11 is 32, 19 and 20 is 39, and so on. And of course, we're also gonna have a total for the outflows, right? Adding going down, you have 28, 24, 61, right? So the cash flow projections is supposed to give us an idea of how much cash comes in in any given month, how much cash is going out, and whether we have a shortfall or a surplus. Now, the next thing we need to put in is the net cash inflow or outflow, right? So this tells us, again, if we're gonna have a surplus or a deficit of cash in any given month. So of course, positive figures are surpluses, which we see in the majority of the months, and negative figures are deficits or shortfalls. Okay, so we had a balance. I said a balance of 5,000 at the start of May. So normally people might put balances on top. Um, again, given the structure of the format, I don't think a balance could have gone on top um, because that would have required a different format and so a couple of different lines put in here, which I didn't have space for. So the balance is actually better put below here. Now that's going to give us a balance carried forward of 22. So if you started off with 5,000 and you have a surplus of cash of 17, you're going to have 22,000 at end. And the balance at the end of one month becomes the balance at the start of the next month. Now that balance there is added to the net inflow and that's of course going to give us the balance for the next month. Sorry, the balance at the end of June, 30,000. And the balance at the end of June becomes the balance at the start of July. So in July now, the balance of 30,000 being brought forward kind of helps to net off or provide cash for the deficit of 22. So we, <clears throat> sorry, we still have $8,000 going towards next month. So 8,000 at the end of July becomes 8,000 at the start of August. And eight and eight will give us 16. Of course, the balance at the end of August becomes the balance at the start of September, which of course is 16,000. That's added to the 7,000 to give us the balance at the end of September, which therefore becomes the balance at the start of October, which is 23,000. And 11 plus 23 is 34. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the July 2021 POA Paper 2. If you have any questions about anything in the video, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free payway handouts just for you. 
As per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.